Hi, it's Darnell with Waveland Recipes and I'm going to be trying an apple pie in the Oster Rapid Crisp Air Fryer Oven. We'll see how it does with something as delicate as a pie baking an apple pie and we're going to try that right now. Alright, so let's go over the ingredients for this apple pie. I've got two ready-made pie crusts I prefer Pillsbury personally and that's not any type of uh, promotion for them. I mean, I'm, nothing in this video is sponsored is what I'm trying to say, but I prefer the Pillsbury crust because they're usually more reliable. But you got to get what's available sometimes, so I was at the Walmart and had to get what was available and they just happened to only have their brand in stock. So I'm <laughs> going to have to use that for this one because of the timing of getting this taken care of for you. I've got myself some cooking spray. I'm just going to use that to spray the bottom of the pan well. So just spraying the pan up real good on the bottom with my cooking spray there. And I've also got some apple pie filling. And this apple pie filling, this uh, was definitely more expensive than I would usually get. I usually just get whatever cans might be on sale or look good. But um, this time I got these, they're a bit more expensive like I said. They uh, cost a lot more and are only 15 ounces. I keep stressing they cost a lot more, right? <laughs> but uh, they did. But they only have 15 ounces in a jar. And they're made by these folks called Baked Good Apple Pie Filling. No sugar added. And, uh, you know, it seemed like it was supposed to be maybe a little, maybe a little better. I mean, the ingredient list is very short as far as what's in there and so gonna give this a shot just for this apple pie and see how it turns out and since it's only 15 ounces in a jar I got three in case I need three of them because usually I get two 20 ounce jars to put 40 ounces in to a, a pie crust so we'll see if I need three jars or maybe 30 ounces we'll just see how it fills up I've also got some ground cinnamon that I'm going to be putting in so to start, I'm going to take the pie crust out and put the one on the bottom just to line the bottom of the pie dish here. I've got a 9 inch pie dish. So here's the uh, great value or Walmart brand of pie crust. It's, um, you know, I usually take them right out the fridge because things flake better if you cook them right out of the fridge. But this one, you see, it just fell apart on me. Usually the Pillsbury crusts are a little a little more sturdy and a little easier to pull apart, not as brittle as this. But, uh, you know, this is going on the bottom, thankfully. So thank God it's on the bottom, so, you know, it's not like it's going to have to be on top, seeing that big split. But even on top, I guess that wouldn't be too bad if, you know, it gives a little venting. But we're going to put this on in here and Kind of put it up on the backs and sides and you can go with it. So I don't think it's too terrible a deal there. But do what we can to try and maybe mend the holes just a little bit. So there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just put a little cinnamon on the bottom of the pie crust. So sprinkle some cinnamon across the bottom there. There we go, with some cinnamon across the bottom. Now I'm going to take one of these uh, pie fillings, apple pie fillings here, and just pour it out. You can see how it looks. It looks good as far as fillings go. I'm going to, I guess, use this knife to help me get it out. One just flowing out easily on its own. It's interesting coming out. I mean, it doesn't look anything like... Uh, most pie fillings that you get out of the can look. This one looks different. Um, I guess I'm not an expert on pie fillings, but it does have an interesting look to it. You know, it's not all gooey, I guess, because it has, you know, different stuff, which I hope is better for you than the regular pie fillings that you get out the can. So, let's get this other one out of here. Alright, now we got two in. Alright, I'm just going to spread it out here. 
I guess spreading it out, I'm debating if I need a third to really load this pie up. I'm thinking, let's see. I guess you can leave it a comment if you would try that third one, but I think, you know, going with 45 ounces, it's going to be, I guess it's going to be kind of loaded if I do that, which isn't such a horrible idea. I know somebody's probably saying, yes, yes, more, more. <laughs> um, I guess I'm debating. I don't want to overdo it. I guess I'll go for it because I, I got three. We'll just see what happens, right? Let's hope I don't make a mess. Lord willing, I won't. <laughs> Here we go. 45 ounces of pie filling. And I would normally use 40, so I'm just going 5 ounces more, technically speaking. Sorry for any excess noise from the scraping. But yeah, 45 ounces, it's not bad. I think we're going to be okay. I think that's going to be just fine. We'll just spread that out just like that there. I think that looks pretty good. You can let me know in a comment what you think about that. I think that's good to go. Now I'm just going to take some ground cinnamon and sprinkle over the top. So that's more cinnamon because I like cinnamon. It gives a real nice touch to things. And with this pie filling not being seasoned extra, much at all, you know, it'll probably just help enhance the flavor. So I'm going to get this other pie crust out, try and uh, carefully put it over the top and maybe try and connect it with the bottom crust a little bit. And then I'll see if maybe I can possibly flute the edges with a fork. We'll see how that goes. But, yeah, these great value crust are definitely more brittle I mean it you know like I just split it by accident trying to trying to roll the thing out it's like split 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 so I'm just going to you know it's just coming apart there just uh I mean all I can say is a lower, lower quality crust I mean it's really the bottom line it's Pillsbury it's just a holds together better it's just a better quality is all it is with making a pie so I you know personally vouch for Pillsbury on that one you know without reservation when it comes to pie crust because every time I use one of these other brands I'm disappointed I'm consistently disappointed when I don't use a Pillsbury pie crust so we're just kind of just tucking it in here tucking it in the sides I think all the same, we'll, we'll get a decent pie out of this in the end. I think, you know, once we're around to the taste test, I don't, I don't think I'll, uh, I'll be worried much about which pie crust I use. <laughs> so, got that in there. And I was going to try and maybe flute the edges a little bit, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to do without flute them this time around. Because this is some brittle, some brittle pie crust, if you know what I'm saying. I'm just going to poke some holes though because it does need some vent holes. So using the uh, fork to make vent holes. You can, you know, sometimes a lot of folks when making a pile just make kind of a hole in the middle for venting. I just poke around. It's just my style of doing things with venting for the pie. So we've got everything all together here for our pie and it's looking pretty decent. So now I'm just going to take the pie, and I've got a rack in the Oster air fryer oven on the very lowest rack. I'm going to take the pie and uh, slide it on in there. So in goes our pie. And if needed, when uh, if things get too hot on the top, I'll take this uh, crust rim protector and put it on. But I'm not going to put it on right now. I'll probably put it on a little ways into the cook if things look like it needs it. So you've got that in there good. I'm going to close up and going to turn the cooker to bake. I'm not going to use convection bake or anything like that. I don't want any you know heavy fan action coming down, you know, messing my crust up, making it hot too quick or overcooking my crust too quick. But we're going to keep it on bake. We're going to put it on 425 degrees Fahrenheit 
cooking time I'm gonna do 30 minutes if it looks like it's all good and done sooner then so be it but with a bake if it functions just like you know maybe a regular oven or something may 425 to 30 minutes will be cool this cook if you're air frying I mean it's no joke if it's air frying it's gonna cook things up real fast but we'll see how it does with a bake now and I'm just gonna hit start and so we'll let this cook I'll bring you on back in a bit all right so we're about 16 minutes 30 seconds into the cook and the rims well the edges are starting to get a little brown so I'm gonna put the rim protector on there's no pause in this cooker so it's just basically a matter of getting it in here right quick and then closing up right quick to try not to lose too much temp there but um, then let that go and continue to cook and I'll bring you on back later okay so it's been baking for 29 minutes remember this cooker has no preheat the top is not as done as I would like yet just give you a quick peek at it that's how it looks not not really a golden brown yet over the top so I'm going to up the time I'm going to kick it up another well kick it up to show six minutes but basically give it another five minutes to cook it kind of you know loses your seconds when you go up on the time there so um, basically about another five six minutes well basically give it total of about 35 minutes you know let's say maybe it needed five minutes to preheat or something but we'll give it another five and then we'll see how it looks after 35 minutes of cooking time it's kind of interesting doing baking with a cooker that has no preheat but I'll bring you on back all right so I'll let this cook for 35 minutes I could have let the cooker just heat with nothing in it for five or ten minutes before starting to put well before putting the pie in but I just put things into this cooker and let it go and so now at 35 minutes of total cooking time everything looks okay my pie filling is starting to basically like bubble up and start coming off the edges of the pie so I'm going to stop it here but I'm going to actually have a look at it I'm going to move this over and just set it on my stove top to just kind of cool for a while maybe put it in the fridge for a while but that's how it looks it looks good and so I'll let it cool down for a while and bring it back probably after some hours of it cooling and we'll do the cut plate and taste test all right so here's our finished pie after it's had some time to cool down and it looks pretty nice to me so I'm going to go ahead and do a cut into here to get myself a nice slice of apple pie so it's going to take it like that and like that so slice through like there get up under there and see what comes out all right that looks good that looks like some good apple pie goodness there well i'll even take some more of that goodness this filling looks pretty nice so we'll set that there and we'll go ahead and do ourselves a taste test so here's our finished apple pie so let's do a taste of it thank god for this tasty pie pie tastes very good the uh, pie filling that I use it tastes different from the stuff you get from a can from sure, for sure but it tastes good you know it, I guess it's not like overly sweet and good but it's kind of a good and kind of fresh it's, it's pretty good so I definitely like how the pie turned out I like how the Oster uh, air fryer oven did as far as baking it it bakes really just like an oven you know it needed to take the time that you would cook you know a pie probably in a regular oven if you just put it in there without preheating so everything turned out as far as big just like it would with a regular oven so that's a pretty good deal for this cooker to be able to air fry and do traditional baking well and so I do like that and so in the video description you can find a referral link for this cooker if you're interested in it 
you pay the same price to help this channel. Also, other ways to help this channel in the video description. Also, you can find a link to the printable version of the recipe and also other recipes on my blog at superwaveovenrecipes.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend, leave your comments, subscribe, hit that notification icon, and good eating.